Welcome to Hero Club Members Only, the show where the founders of Hero Club talk about Hero Club, D&D, and whatever the hell else we want with whoever we want. I'm George Primavera. And I'm Jack Quaid. And, and let's do this. Do this. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to Hero Club Members Only. Glad to have you. This is where we talk about all the things that we don't get to say on the show Cause that's not our thing Welcome to Hero Club, members only I'm hosting this week Hey! It's interesting Jack's hosting this week, everybody it's, very, uh, it's a very interesting position to be in Thank you so much for joining us, everyone uh, Nick, unfortunately, couldn't uh, be with us this week He's doing. Uh, he's taking care of a little uh, family emergency uh, We wish him the absolute best And he will uh, probably be back next week uh, But mm-hmm. in the meantime, uh, we've got Jack here Super pumped Yay! Yay! And, uh, and uh, we also have Are we just We should just intro right off the bat Let's just yeah, do this Let's yeah, not yeah. keep her waiting No, no, not Let's at not all Let's not do it uh, we've got we Natasha, have... uh, Natasha Krause here with us, uh, and you guys might have heard. Uh, Hi. Yeah, there she is. Uh, Yay! <laughs> uh, you might have heard Natasha as Adele Little in Oh Holy Nights, or as Beatrix Bongo in Here There Be Monsters, but most recently she's been playing Millie in Paid Back in Spades, uh, and she's been in uh, quite a few episodes this season. How you doing, Natasha? I'm good. I'm doing good. I had breakfast tacos. Um, so I what? Feel very hey, good. <laughs> yeah. That's Did you make them, or were they? Were they? Uh, was it a Postmate? Uh, no, my boyfriend's been cooking during the quarantine. Oh, oh so, so how, so how very lucky. How has your quarantine? <laughs> that's very lucky. That's 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 a very good breakfast, like a home cooked breakfast item, is a breakfast taco. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, it was just tell us about, eggs, tell us about the tacos. Yeah, yeah. eggs. Um what is it roasted the little tortillas over the stove fire and then some Very nice. sh- shallots that we've been regrowing did you know you can just like oh. put them in water and then they grow back so it's infinite shallots yeah you've been awesome. you have an infinite shallot in your fridge yes and not even in infinite the fridge shallot. just in a little cup I think by the that- window i've just decided that they don't do that and you found the infinite shallot you know what else? That is sounds infinite? like a D and D item to me. The infinite, the wondrous infinite item it requires attunement. The infinite shallot. Uh, you can also do it with celery, but it doesn't grow back as fast as shallots. But celery also infinite. Mm-hmm. Okay, get a little uh, weird cooking tips. I'm gonna put celery and shallots hack. in water. It's a quarantine hack. We need them in this day and age. We need them. Do you have any other any other quarantine hacks oh, that we should be aware of? Uh, Do you have a list we can we can make up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll write a list and I'll I'll email you afterwards. Uh huh. Oh, oh you need some time. <laughs> you don't have it ready. Uh, <laughs> you weren't prepared for the pod. <laughs> no. Come on, dude. Always have a list of your quarantine hacks. Oh, and then I and hand. I watched we all also... Twin Peaks. That's a hack. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like solid. I've, you're not the only one who's done that. I've seen a couple of my friends have watched Twin Peaks and have really? all told me that I should as well. I think it might be a little too weird for me. I tried. I tried once. I, I'll try again. I have nothing but time now. But it was one of those things where the first episode, I don't know. I think I've always just tried at a certain time of night where it was a little bit too late and I was like already on my way to bed and it's just never a good time to start something. Oh, it's a something sleep recipe. And... Yeah. It's so yeah. slow. Yes. It's just like. It's pretty vibey and slow, right? Yeah. Um, cool, but I want well, to like. I, it seems like a thing that I would be into, so, so I just I need to. I don't know. One day, maybe during this time. But but wait, Twin Peaks. You finished all of it? All of it. I the the whole oh first God. three seasons, the movie, and the new season on Showtime. And oh my gosh. honestly, how does the new season hold up? Worth it, because i hate i hated it when i first started it but i was also single when i first started it so i was by myself watching this weird ass show i was like (laughs) what the fuck is this what is this and then now my boyfriend really loves it (laughs) so like it was like there's a there's a teammate in this let's continue so twin peaks twin peaks is a team sport is what you're saying yes exactly okay Mm mm-hmm that's very that's it's good it's good Mm -hmm. i did i thought for a second you were saying uh that you had to be in a relationship to understand twin peaks no no yeah it's a real it's real deep it's real deep in the relationship department (laughs) twin peaks 
no. Uh, Natasha, I've also, I've, we've also all noticed, uh, you, you're still Champagne Tashi on Instagram, right? Yes. Champagne Tashi. Uh, your Instagram content is gold. Oh Maybe God. single-handedly getting me through this quarantine. Oh, my God. God, thank it's, you. It's really good. That... It's really premium. If anybody hasn't, if anybody doesn't follow <sighs> Natasha, change that shit right now because it is uh, Natasha. I mean this as the greatest compliment. It's unhinged <laughs> what you're putting, what you're posting. <laughs> it is unbelievable. Uh, oh my god, guys! All, all I'm gonna, sure this is gonna be, you're gonna. You're going to go follow her as soon as I tell you this. Uh, I didn't realize how many things you could do with the green screen hey, until I one saw of, uh, mm-hmm. One of it's the greatest amazing. things I've ever seen is you <laughs> in a in, <laughs> in a full police uh, uniform from uh, the top up, <laughs> like from the waist up, and then the bottom, you're just, I think, a diaper? It's a Like diaper. a very large adult <laughs> diaper. It's a and, diaper. And uh, you just smell your own fart. <laughs> yeah and it sorry that's that's the less <laughs> minimum context the 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 major context is that there is a super smash brothers character selection screen behind oh yeah you. yeah yeah that one's so and you're good. shuffling through all these insane characters uh and that that came up of you as a baby cop mm-hmm. and, I, <laughs> and bring smelling us, your own bring part us, uh, uh, last bring us through i laugh for hours bring us through that one in particular how how did that uh come about oh the baby cop <laughs> How'd you come up with Baby Cop, Natasha? Baby, yeah, what is the origins of Baby Cop? The or, uh, Baby Cop is a bit that I've actually done on, <laughs> on stage. Is it really? If you can believe, yeah, where I... Um, can you can you do a little Baby Cop for us? You're on the west. <laughs> you're a perpetrator. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna die. I'm gonna kill you. Oh. That's Baby Cop. Wait, so the Baby Cop... So Baby Cop is also like a murderer? Baby, baby Cop is a secret serial killer. Well, Baby Cop is just doing the Baby Cop's job. Um, but Oh, Jesus yeah, Christ. Oh, so it's a commentary. There's levels, baby. There's levels. Um, there's layers. Good for you. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, but it's a bit that I did on Holy stage shit. that then when I, you know, dressed up for my TikTok, I was like, you know what? People are going to either fucking hate this. Or be like, <laughs> you know, that's my friend. I'll like this. I don't know. So that no, Natasha, yeah. I mess with Baby Cop. Thank baby you. Cop's great. Thank you. Baby Cop's, uh, man, quarantine mascot if we ever needed one. <laughs> but also just great in general. Thank you. Just great. That's very kind. <laughs> Natasha, oh why don't we talk a little bit about uh, how we met? Because uh, Natasha has been a good friend of mine for quite a few years. Yeah. Uh, we met in New York City. Mm-hmm. When we were living in the the Big Apple, mm-hmm. uh, you guys we did improv doing, together, right? We did improv together. That's right. Uh, we were in a group uh, called My Mommy, mm-hmm. and we performed a couple of times in New York, uh, semi successfully. More than a couple of and times. A l- <laughs> more than a couple. I think we performed like five or six times. Do you remember when we did that uh, set? at that like print shop in Brooklyn and it was you it was just you me and one other person and we both went to sweep at the same time and we bonked heads straight up oh yeah. my god yeah yeah <laughs> yeah for an audience of 8 of 8 yeah yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was special uh so yeah, that was horrific. So wait, hold on. You guys both had like an idea for a new scene at the same time. Both of you were like on yeah, the, yeah, the book yeah. ends of the line and then you swept into each other. Yeah. To try to end the scene at the simultaneously yes. and we headbutted like a couple of big uh, buffoons. <laughs> Please tell me you made that into su- the scene. No! No, no we should have. <laughs> but we were children who didn't know how to do no, improv. we just oh, we were... blushed. Blushed so hard. <laughs> Yeah, how no middle not, ditch in Schwartz, are we? How did, how did you not see each other? Were you both like cheating out so much, like ha cha cha, end of the scene, <laughs> like towards the audience, or what, were you facing the wall? Maybe adrenaline's the answer. <laughs> adrenaline, probably. Yep, there was eight people. You don't understand. It was very high pressure. Yeah, it the was, who's who like... of the New York comedy scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh there were a gosh. lot of uh, chuckles. Oh, that was so <laughs> funny. That's a lot of the audience. <laughs> no, no, we uh-huh. killed, we killed. And then silence. We killed, we killed. Did we kill? I think that one was well, actually performed... pretty good. I, I blocked it out, so <laughs> I'll take your word for it. 
So you guys performed five or six times together or you guys were on the same group or how, how old were you at this point? Both of you, was it like oh, kind of like man. earlier on in the, in the improv career of the two of you? I was like 21 we, or 22. I think you were 22 and I, I think, am I a year older than you? Is that yeah. how that works? Yes. I'm, I think I was probably 23 when we started doing it. Uh, the improv. We met in and, an improv um, 401. So like, I guess yes, that's we met early. in UCB Improv. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we we knew each other for like a year living in New York, and we did improv for a year with uh, a few other people. Actually, um, <gasps> Jeffrey Robb, who played oh. uh, Michael Hopscotch yes. in uh, Here There Be Monsters, was also part of that group. Mm -hmm. so that's fun. Look at that! Shout out Jeffrey. Love we love you. Uh, so many uh, so many Hero Club veterans came from my mommy. I that's know. I just harvested. Sentence. That's a horrible <laughs> sentence to say out loud. Oh my god! <laughs> that's the best Holy sentence. Shit. So many that's hero club the... vets came from my so mommy. So many hero club. That vets was came our from whole. That was our whole impetus behind the name was Ooh. that every announcer would have to say, "And now my, my mommy. mommy." But can that also that was... be like the description for this episode? <laughs> Just Jack saying yeah. so many members of Hero Club came from my mommy, Jack Quaid. Please. It'll be just that quote. <laughs> Recorded the day after Mother's Day. You're <laughs> <Yeah>. welcome. Um, <laughs> geez. I feel like that was a long con trick uh, that you guys played on me. Mm -hmm. I feel very... <laughs> yeah, we just wanted I to feel, own ya. We got just, you. We got it, you to like, say that shit. Years in the making. God damn. Virtual high five, Natasha. <laughs> Way to go. We pulled it off. Oh, yeah. Wait, so this this place where you two bonked your heads, was this a, like, a official UCB show, okay. or was this, like, you guys striking no, no, out no, no, on, no. on your own? No, we... No, it was a... We were striking out on our own. We got we, It was a print shop. We got... No, we got booked. <laughs> yeah, we got booked. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We got booked. They called us up, and they were like, my mommy, please. We have a print shop in Brooklyn. It's we not near any... <laughs> It's near no train stops, no subway stops it anywhere near this. It was in my thing. neighborhood. To, we walked there. It was in your neighborhood. It is uh, a sheer, the, the, the entrance to the street was a sheer wall of windows. Mm -hmm. So we just were looking Ugh. out onto the street of New York, mm -hmm. doing improv on a uh, foot tall stage for mm -hmm. eight people in a print shop that was badly lit. Um, it was, I do kind of miss that about New I did New York comedy too. And just like how I, I had like a college group and the shows were like, you know, decently packed. Cause it was like the group for the college, but then you would just go out on your own sometimes into a weird place. That's not meant for comedy in any oh. way. Oh yeah. And just usually in like Queens or Brooklyn, it was just like a bar with like maybe a box in a corner for a stage. And you have mm -hmm. to do a whole sketch show or a whole improv show with a shit ton of people. Yeah. Yep. Oh man. All right. RIP UCB. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's kind of sad. I mean, uh, is it officially done? No, oh, it's the yeah. facility. No. Oh, Natasha. So Natasha works, worked there. So yeah. Give us the scoop. The Natasha. What's, what's going in, on? The, the, I mean, I just have as much of a scoop as anyone else, but like the facilities in New York are closed, but now they're going to, okay. they're like doing what they did before they had, you know, the money to rent out a place. They are going to just rent out rehearsal rooms at other studios um oh they're so they're doing like the pearl studios deal yeah but the la how stuff old is, is was the la okay. stuff's open hmm. how old cool. was the theater in uh chelsea that was like their oldest theater in new york right is that uh, oh yeah when did the one was when did that one start like the 70s i think no really no, no. I think ucb no 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 it was like Amy no. Poehler no, no. started the. It thing. was like the. No, 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 not, no, no, no. But didn't it become? Didn't it become a theater, and then the theater was moved in by UCB because it was under a grocery. Oh. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Sorry, no, I'm, no, no. I'm, I meant, I meant the when did the UCB Chelsea theater start? Not like when did that particular. Not when did it under... become a theater? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. I, well, it all started with the Gristides, and then a theater <laughs> moved in underneath it. That's um, right. I don't know when it like what year it moved into the Gristidi's basement, but like the first UCB theater was actually a strip club. It was an old strip club. Whoa. Oh, yeah. And so they like, no way they, they had to cover all the mirrors on the wall. Um, Cause you know, oh, like in a strip shit. club, you want to see all sides. There's mirrors. But they didn't need yeah. that for improv shows. Um, uh, I will just say I've never been in a, a strip club, so I don't know. Uh, okay. 
I, I'm saying like, right, of course, you want to see, you want, you got to have mirrors. Yeah, like mirrors. Like, like I knew, I have no idea that that is a true fact about strip well, clubs. I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm a strip club expert either, but I think. Like, uh, you you might be the the strip club ep- expert on this uh, call, so <laughs> I will say, the leading authority. I will say I prefer improv shows with a shit ton of mirrors, but that's just me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I want. <laughs> I live. Uh, <laughs> I live uh, like very close to a, to a strip club that I've never been to, and it's like it's it's just down the street from me, and I'm like. When you I feel like, it, if, it, like I don't. I never want to go in. I think it's like it's too close to home. I've also never been to a strip club, but uh, that's not the one I want to start with. Yeah, it's also literally too close to home. Yeah, it's li- <laughs> Dak. Yep, one thousand yep. percent. I don't know. I just I don't want to know what's going on in there because it doesn't no. look like as strip clubs go. A particularly. I mean, like, it's probably what you think is going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like that's probably. I just stand out there for hours, going, going yeah. "What the fuck is happening in there?" <laughs> Jack's asking people on the way out, like, "Excuse me, uh, could you tell me what's going on in there?" Yeah. Excuse me, what did you see? Yeah. What do uh, you no. know? Uh, I live down the road. <laughs> I just, I've never yeah, I live down the road. <laughs> Oh my god! Just a friendly oh, passerby. That's so, that's uh, sorry, so George, funny. you were about to switch gears. <laughs> yeah, let's switch gears. Uh, as much as uh, this is so funny to me, uh, but one second, y'all. Um, let's talk about Natasha. What was your first experience with D and D and coming into Hero Club? What was that like? Like, com- did, did you have an experience with D and D before you came into Hero Club, or was that cold for you? No, it, my first experience was with you, George. Do you remember? In ca- in- that was your first. Oh, that was your first time playing? In L.A. Right, right, right. You made... Oh, with Kevin, right? Yes. That what was, was your the- first time playing at all? Ever. You know... What, oh, was, what, was, the, what was the campaign? Oh. What was... The Bring campaign, me through this evening. The campaign was dope. First okay. of all, my experience was very, very good. George is a great DM. I was, like, mind blown. <laughs> That was awesome. Um, yeah, George, you can like follow up, you know, back me yeah, up. Yeah, uh, it was, I think your character, uh, I'm sorry for saying this out loud, but you came up with it, was uh, Gregory the, it was Gregory the Cuck? Gregory the Cuck. <laughs> <laughs> Gregory the Cuck, he was a pigeon man, aka. Where the fuck has he been? Araka. All of Hero Club. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why he wasn't allowed. We'll bring him in. Yeah, Gregory the uh, Cuck is yeah, the we'll, strongest we'll... character. <laughs> I love him. Uh, did he uh, have a voice? Like... Oh God, what was his voice? He did have a voice. He was very. Uh... Oh man, it was like really stressed. Oh yeah, he was like. <laughs> and, he, What's the voice? and he would puff up when like things would be kind of sexual. You know, like how yeah, pigeons yeah. puff up. He'd puff up? <laughs> yeah. Like how pigeons puff up? <laughs> you know oh when a God. pigeon puffs because they're a cuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wait, hold on. Oh, so no. how, did, how did Gregory the Cuck fit into the larger universe of this campaign? Was it a pigeon-centric campaign? Was it a cuck-centric campaign? <laughs> Bring me through no. this. No, 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 no. <laughs> Natasha, uh, I remember Natasha spitballing two things, and she was like, okay, can I be anything? And I was like, yeah, you could be a bird person. You could be a... She goes, can I be a pigeon? I was like, yeah, you can be a pigeon. <laughs> and then come up with your name. And she thinks for five seconds, and she just goes, Gregory the Cuck. Mm-hmm. Like that was the uh, the golden uh, mm. trophy. She lifted off of the pressure pad and switched the sand down. She held it up for all to see. Uh, <sighs> yeah, times. you. That was you guys got like you guys got captured and uh, escaped a, a jail cell, and that was like it was pretty basic. Well, okay, first here, here, here. Times, right? So it was like me. Oh, oh I'm and so sorry. Kevin <laughs> and Kevin was like a hero character or whatever. Mine was Gregory the Cuck. They met each other. The backstory is when Gregory was crying alone in the gym locker room mm-hmm. because <laughs> because he found out that his wife was cheating on him. But when he was, oh, so he was involuntarily. Yes, you don't remember this? No, listen. Oh, and he was crying, but he was upset because he liked it. 
when he saw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so wow, yes, and so oh, he and wow. the hero became friends because <laughs> he told them the story in the gym locker room, and then they went on the campaign. Oh. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I'm crying laughing right now. <laughs> that is so fucking great. Wow. Okay. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, wow. So, okay. I, okay, got it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and then, oh, uh, let's... Oh, please, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I The campaign was awesome. Oh. It was a great twist. It was a great twist. It was a goofy... I think it was what a was, goofy wait, little so one-off. You guys have to bring me through this campaign because it starts in a gym locker room, and then what? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. So, like, she made some backstory. Oh, okay. She backstory it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the prequels. Was, yeah. It was a really, I remember this being, like, a real, this is why, like, I didn't remember it at first. It was, like, a really bare bones, what is D&D, uh, let's learn some basics, but also introduce you to the fact that you can make any choice you want kind of thing, right? That was sort of the idea. Uh, it seemed And then we just kind of threw me. you. But it was cool. Oh, did it? <laughs> yeah. Well, but then, because then we threw you in the deep end with Hero Club with, uh, I think Beatrix was your first character, right? What was that like? Oh, yes. That was very different than Gregory the Cuck. Um, that was very, very different. Yeah. But that was also super, super fun. Like, who was it? It was Hannah. What was, what was it? Hannah, Nick. Uh, so Hannah was playing uh, the uh, monkey, Lilia. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick was playing Captain Drake Muldoon, the otter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we had uh, Dylan uh, playing Bastion Lagrange, the elephant. And we had Marty playing the uh, um, Vivian Stoker, the uh, yeah. mouse uh, warlock. The, yeah. the mouse you, 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 who, Yeah. Yeah, the mouse grouch. That's right. You guys had like a special connect, right? Yeah, that was that was so much fun. What, I was, mean... it like, what was it like hopping in? It was, I was a little intimidated at first because, you know, like I had only just done one campaign, but I really liked it. It was really fun. And then Hannah and Dylan and everyone, they're like so nice and so supportive. And just after Mm. every take, we're like, good job. You're doing great. And I was like, thank you. Yeah. This is so fun. (laughs) Was it, was the process different than you thought it would be? Um, I guess like yes and no, because. You know, we've been friends for years now, so I, I kind of know what you're about, George. Uh, right. It was fun to just like be in a room of other like-minded George curated people, <laughs> where they're all very nice <laughs> and smart and like, you know, supportive and. Oh, I can't take fun. credit was, for that, it was, but it was, that's nice of you to say. <laughs> Well, they're all they're all great. So I don't know. It was it was just like really nice, and I was like, I can't wait to do this again. Yeah, it was so much fun. I definitely. I mean, the was that uh, when you two, George, had you moved here yet? Yeah, or yeah. Natasha, did you move? Did, Natasha, did you move here from New York as well? Yeah, surprisingly, because when you first announced that you were moving, I was like, what? No way! And then I was like, wait, I really like the sun too. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna go. That's right. Yeah. That was kind of a thing with like my friends at NYU. Like anytime anyone was like, "I'm going to LA," everybody else was like, "Okay, here we yeah, go." Yeah, it's because everybody in New York doesn't one. want everybody else to be happy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hot take, hot, hot take. take. Sorry, I definitely made the right choice. Like LA has just improved my quality of life a lot. Um, yeah, and, and you I get think to it suits me. you get to hang with those uh, those cool hero club guys and girls and and yeah. you know we're yeah. we're all we're all we're the all, coolest people we're here. the coolest boys and girls on this side of the on this side of the states. Hey, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like Ryan stuff. Gosling lives here and shit, but we're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. So you you adjusted super well. I remember you coming in and playing Beatrix and rocking it. Um, and we loved having you come back for the end fight too. That was super fun. But that was an NPC oh, yeah. character technically, right? And then we threw you in the deep yes. end real hard with Oh Holy Nights, mm-hmm. where we had you play Adele Little, <laughs> and you rocked it once yeah. again. What was that like? That uh, was way different. Um, I remember like whatever we sat down, and then you know had the setup recording okay whatever and your first thing you said were was like Adele wakes up 
Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And I was like, okay, now what am I supposed to do? Like, am I supposed to start fighting people? Am I supposed to go off? Like, I don't understand. Um, but that was really fun. And then what? Then I like attacked the monster, and then I was like, wait, I probably shouldn't. Yeah, you yelled out to it, and it started chasing you, and you had a moment of, mm, no. Yeah. Once yeah. <laughs> you once you got like a, a the gist of the size of it, you took a pass on it, which was fun. I was ready for you to fully fight it if you wanted to. I, I know. had stats for it and everything. But I was like, I probably shouldn't die in the first episode. I don't know. Well, no. I would never have <laughs> in the Christmas special, I don't think I would have ever had a situation where the child is murdered by a <laughs> troll. <laughs> but we might have started the campaign from the top of the mountain instead of the bottom of the mountain. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. That kind of thing. Yes. Uh, I would have made some major adjustments, but we would have we would have been fine. We would have been rolling. Yeah. Uh, that would have been that would have been pretty cool. Yeah. Did you would do you have a preference? What do you prefer? Of what? Do you think you like the NPC thing more, or do you like playing the player character more? I definitely liked playing the player character because um, I think it just has that element of it's all improv, right? And so we have these little subconscious course, things that yeah. come out of us that it's like, okay, what would we do in this moment as well? Um, mm-hmm, and then like yeah. having to keep in mind, all right, I'm this little British orphan as well, essentially. So like <laughs> layering that on. Um, or I was going to say also the the deliberation between, you know, Hannah and Dylan and you of like, okay, what should I do next? Like, oh my God, I really don't know. Like that's one of the most fun parts of it as well. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys uh, problem solved your way through a lot of that stuff in very interesting ways, especially with that um, uh, the tunnel where you guys all had your own little trials. All of you yes. could completely decide how you wanted to solve them yourselves. That was super fun and cool. Yes. And you all did an amazing job with that. Did you did you think that the um, uh, the deliberation around the table, like how does that make how does that make it different from improv for you? Was that like a major difference or like that you would maybe take your time to say what you wanted to say? Do you like that better? Do you like that less? What do you think? I, it's definitely different. And I, I wouldn't say I like it more or less, but it's just like a, it's a different Mm. medium, right? So we're like self-directing ourselves in the moment too. Like whenever we take a different take, you can see it just in someone's facial expressions. They're like, oh no, that wasn't it. But they don't have to say it. They just like redo the line. And that is, in itself is so endearing from all the other actors. Mm. Wow. That, you know, I never actually, that's actually that's super interesting. You're right. None of us, there's no real director, yeah. you know, like we all are just directing ourselves, yeah. but we all collectively agree. Like, yeah, that was the one. It's so mm-hmm. weird. It's like a very, it's like, I get why some of the guests that we bring in, not like, like you, like the people who like haven't played before just have, are a little bit nervous because they're like, what even is this? I've never done anything like this mm-hmm. before. Yeah. Cause you're right. There's improv and then there's this. Yeah. And it's its own the completely. severe amount of editing also makes it sound way more written. You know what I mean? Like when, when you, when you get in the room and you're like, nothing's written down, everybody's just coming up with these lines off the top of their head. It's like, yes, they are, but they're also trying it two or three times and taking a little breaks mid sentence to try to search for the right word. And we're all just, luckily, I think all of us have like a good sense of tone, which is like a, like literally a musical ability at a base level to know that if you stop in the middle of a sentence, you need to continue the exact same inflection and momentum through the sentence. So, Oh my gosh. Yeah, you it's a little, saying oh, that it's like, just reminded me of when, remember when that whole episode we recorded for like an hour and then it got deleted. Do you remember yes. that? Yes. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. We talked about this a couple episodes ago. Oh, you ago. did? Oh, yeah, my so, gosh. Oh, my God. Oh my God. No, no. Please, we can talk because you were there. So you, you, <laughs> this was your first hand experience. Natasha, oh, bless you. It's your, it's her, Natasha's second episode. Oh, my God. We do 45 minutes of an encounter. Uh, and then Oof. we, uh, the garage band, which we were recording on at the time, mm-hmm. crashes and we lose everything. Yes. Uh, and I froze. I did not deal with it well. I just like you went to, did. is there oh any way gosh. I can? No, I, I froze up and I was just like searching the computer and the internet for ways to recover the stuff while everybody else went away and just wrote out what had happened. No, you're and so hard we were on yourself. Like, okay. Yeah, it, you did amazing. Oh. You were troubleshooting the computer. Me, D&D Dodo was just sitting there like, 
uh, okay, I guess this happens sometimes. Dylan, <laughs> Hannah, and Nick were just like line by line, like move by move, basically just talking it all out. And then we got it out wow. in like 20 minutes. Something, but And it was like basically yeah, we the re- same thing of what we just did. And in me and my head right. just watching this all happen, I'm like, these guys are so smart. Like, and so thoughtful. <laughs> no, seriously, like, give yourself so much credit. That was insane. That could have been a disaster. Aww. Like, we could have just stopped right it there. Been. Yeah, but we didn't, and we kept doing it. Yep. Was that the first time that it happened uh, in, in, like, Hero Club history, George? So, was like- the, the first time that it happened on in, in episodes that are out now, yes. That was, the, and uh, prob- oh, probably the yeah. only time it's ever happened like that, where we uh, lost everything, and we didn't write, like, a script, but we wrote an order of what happened in the combat, so we knew, like, everybody's narrations and descriptions were a little different, and I think some of the dice rolls were uh different but we or they were they were roughly the same as close as we could remember uh but we we definitely remembered if they had been successful or failures so mm-hmm. that was sort of just sort of a moot point we just tried to most of right. us remember the numbers but had to sort of maybe fudge them once in a while but mostly that was still the way it all turned out for real um oh uh, so it was during combat it was during so combat it was like, so it was round by round uh, so it was so a lot more complicated than just like a scene. conversation. Yeah, it was like a oh yeah. god because we didn't want to like replay it because that would a take another hour and we didn't have that time and also it wouldn't be true to what had happened uh, off the cuff. You know, we didn't want to like rewrite it to be more epic or something. You know, uh, but that was it's crazy. like if in, during an improv show halfway through it, everyone just forgot everything that just happened. Yeah. And then yeah. we, yeah, right. And then we were just like, oh, everybody forgot. Okay. And it, real quick, let's just rip through this. And yeah. we did all of it again. But, but they're insisting that you do exactly what you <laughs> yes. just did. Yeah, do it all <laughs> like you did it. Do it again. We all forgot. We all forgot. Do yes. it again. Yeah. Uh, and that was the only time it ever happened. So luckily we figured it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully. I'm going to knock on some wood right now. So that doesn't. Me too. Happen in the future. Yeah. No, please, please. Yeah, no. Not. It's interesting because it's like, it, what do you do? Because it's essentially like one third writer's room, one third improv show, and and one third D and D, like a voice voiceover. Mm-hmm. One, then we, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yes. With with D and D is 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 you know twenty five twenty five twenty five twenty five. What we're 25, doing, 25? but like, yeah, let's go. With, let's let's split it up in uh, quarters. 25, let's 25, do that. Twenty five, twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like okay, let's recreate this. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, it's, it's voiced over. I've thankfully, knock on wood, never had in any of my sessions with you guys, never had to do that, which is, I don't, most people haven't. That you guys pulled that off. We're trying to keep it that way. <laughs> that's, well, Super speaking great. of uh, uh, D&D and fun stuff, uh, we're going to play a little D&D Travel Edition with Ooh. Jack and Natasha, everybody. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so, for the people that don't know, uh, this is something that Nick and I used to do in college when we were bored. Uh, we would uh, take a D20 with us. One of us always had a D20 on us at all times. Uh, that's a horrifying fact that I have to admit, but it's true. I always had like a D20 on me somewhere. Uh, and we would just kill time that we had uh, by rolling D20s and doing like little chaotic adventures where the end result is everyone who is playing dies. That's when the game ends. Uh, or or is successful. You never know. Uh so we're going to play with a little uh, we're going to play with Natasha and Jack today uh, and uh, you two are going to be playing secret agents. So Ooh. think about what your secret agents look like and are named by. And you are going to uh, be pulling off a heist on the Scorpio vault in Ernest Von Naturally <laughs> in Ernest Von Kilcreeth's Oceanside Mansion. OK. Okay. okay. Yeah, Take yeah, a yeah. moment to let that ruminate. Get your D20s out, everybody. And then uh, we're going to see uh, exactly what happens on this mission. So the Oceanside uh, Mansion is looming on this big cliff uh, hundreds of feet up from the ocean. It's uh, a pale yellow color with white ornamentation, marble all over the exterior of the building, and also a brick and stone uh, driveway that leads all the way down this massive winding path to the base of this cliff. Uh, And you guys are at the very bottom of this cliff dressed in what? Oh, man. Natasha, you go ahead. Yo, outfits. I think you're going to be mad at me at the character I made up. (laughs) But... Oh, there's no chance. I think last session. Uh, is it a cuck? Is it a cuck? I think Nick. Uh... 
think Nick suicided Hannah with a donkey full of dynamite, so there's nothing oh. you can do that would be too crazy. Okay, mine's just stupid. All right. My character is named Austina Powers. I am a sexy <laughs> British um spy and i have a like a fluffy ruffle prince shirt and a psychedelic power suit oh a power suit okay and uh uh-huh. big glasses uh, i saw you do uh, the motion for big glasses <laughs> <laughs> big glasses yes austina austina jack uh i am uh the actor pierce brosnan Oh, okay, Pierce Brosnan. Who, 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 yes, I, I am just the I'm, I'm the actor. I've been recruited by uh, I guess <sighs> MI6 for real. Uh, they thought I could you know figure this out because I played James Bond. Uh, but uh, you know this is my first mission, so I'm nervous. I'm wearing a tuxedo because that's what I know to wear, and um, I have a, a, a watch with uh, a lot of functions <laughs> and features. A lot of functions. And uh, I have, I'm a little bit like I have, you know, my facial hair has grown out a little bit. Uh, he's older, Pierce Brosnan. Oh, okay. Uh, but he, you know, he's just having fun being a secret agent. He's doing, he's doing great. Okay. So, how would you guys like to? And uh, and we're friends. And we're good friends. You're good. Oh yeah, we've been we've been good friends for a while. <laughs> Trusted good friends. Yeah. How we met on the set of Mama Mia. That's what I was gonna ask. How'd you meet? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> Austina Powers was doing a little uh, research for her uh, mission. And met Pierce Brosnan on the set of Mamma Mia. <laughs> yes, and re- and recruited me, and, and recruited me, and recruited him. So, uh, how are you guys going to uh, infiltrate Ernest von Kilkreath's Oceanside Mansion? We're at the base of a cliff where there's also a road to the mansion. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, I'm, I'm gonna... gonna call in my boat car. <laughs> Like a little boat drives out off the beach and uh, f- like rolls up bumpily on the sand to where you guys are. Nice. Uh, hey, Aust- oh man, my British accent's going to be so bad. Ostina, I'm actor Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> uh, Pierce, I know that. You're my best friend. Yeah, I'm going to be Cockney because that's easier for me to do as Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. Secretly Cockney. Yeah, I'm a little bit lower class than you'd expect. I guess. Um, but I love that about you, Pierce. Yeah, you always have, ever since we met at Crafty at Mamma Mia. Anyway, you go up there in the car boat, and I'll... And I'm gonna grapple up there with me fucking watch. <laughs> you you create a distraction. Okay, if you say so, Pierce. I love you. I love you too, but yeah, let's not make I'll this see- weird. <laughs> It's not weird if... Okay, bye. I guess um, it's weird and... now that I'm calling it out. Whatever. And Austina jumps into her car and does the honk. And it it's a, it goes... Wow, And then goes up the hill very, very fast. Okay. P- <laughs> Pierce, knowing this honk as a signal, repeats it with his mouth. It just goes... Bow, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> it means the mission is starting. Okay. Uh, Pierce... <laughs> Can you please uh, make a uh, check with your watch to try to grapple up the side of the mountain? All right, here we go, Pierce Brosnan. Four. Okay, uh, the watch uh, is not nearly long enough to crawl you up the side of the mountain, so you're going to have to do it manually. Does that mean you're going to free solo oh, this cliff? <laughs> oh, shit. All right, do I go to oh, check? God. Do I have to oh. check that? Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll an athletics check to free climb. Ooh, net 20. Oh, man. So Pierce wow. Brosnan uh, <laughs> abandons the watch and then uh, free solos up the side of an ocean cliff. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah! <laughs> and then the uh, boat car rolls up to the front of the mansion. As it rolls up to the front in the big roundabout uh, with the uh, very luxurious gardens outside, a wealthy-looking man in a suit uh, exits, uh, and he says... Uh, who are you? To Austina. Aust- My name's Austina. Austina Powers. And she uh, rips off her ruffled shirt. She's wearing another ruffled shirt underneath <laughs> um, and puts out her hand and says, Charmed, I'm sure. 
Uh, and uh, the the man supposedly just takes her hand and shakes it and says, and what is the purpose for your visit here? Oh, shit. What is the purpose? Uh... You're trying to heist the Scorpio oh. vault, but you probably don't want to let this fella know. I'm here to check out the pool. <laughs> oh, g- roll <laughs> roll a deception check, Natasha. Okay. Roll uh, Tell me what you get. Rolling. Oh, shite. I got seven. We don't have a pool. He looks at you suspiciously. Oh. Oh, yes, that's right. Let me just check my list here. She goes back to the car, pulls out a little notepad and says, All right, I'm here to check if your refrigerator's running. (laughs) Roll another deception check. Shit, please, please. Oh my god, six. The man pulls out a gun. We also don't have a refrigerator. (laughs) (laughs) And then... um... Uh, I see this from the... I've I've reached the summit of the cliff and I see this and I attempt to shoot a tranquilizer dart out of my watch uh, to help Austina. Roll that attack. Twelve. (laughs) Hugga! Yes. Blump, and he drops down onto the ground, cracking his head open. Uh, when you check his pocket, his ID says George Primavera. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god, that cheeky bastard! Bow chicka wow wow, he shouts. In order to Bow confirm, Bow chicka wow wow's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so leaving, <This> <laughs> leaving the dead George Primavera <laughs> out on the steps. Uh, you guys are now, you have open access with the door open to uh, Ernest Von Kilkreath's Oceanside Mansion. How are you going to enter? There's uh, there's no one in this I'll parking st- lot. There's nobody in this roundabout. It's all seemingly abandoned except for this uh, butler man who walked out. Cool. Pierce, how about we do a couple donuts and then go in? <laughs> yeah, if there's one thing Pierce Brosnan loves, it's doing donuts in a roundabout. The easiest place to do donuts. Okay. Hop in! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Roll. Who's driving? Austina, it was your Pierce idea. Pierce can drive. Alright, yeah. Oh, sure. You know what? <laughs> How about we rock, paper, scissors for it? Alright, do a little virtual right, rock, ready? paper, scissors. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Scissors, shoot! <laughs> Both Damn. scissors. Unbelievable. Let's do Damn. it again. <laughs> rock. Rock. Paper. paper scissors. Shoot. Un- shit. Un- oh, unbelievable. Shit. Well, you did paper. We both did paper. All right. One more time. Third time's the charm. Rock. Paper. Rock. Paper. Scissors. scissors shoot. shoot. All right. All right. Oh, shit. Scissors cuts paper. I'm doing some fucking donuts. All right, Pierce, roll a driving check to do the donuts on the cliffside in the roundabout. <laughs> What'd you roll? Two. Okay. Oh my god. What's gonna happen? Oh no. This is gonna be the shortest oh. game of travel edition yet. <laughs> yeah, donuts. Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. rips some donuts in the roundabout and it goes well for a second. You guys are freaking out, enjoying the time, ready for your heist. And then all of Woo! a sudden, uh, you just catch one of the corners wrong and uh, <laughs> the boat mobile rips off the side of the cliff and uh, immediately oh my God. 70 feet in the air flies into the sky off towards the uh, plummeting like, you know, now below you is just 80 feet of a free fall. Okay, I attempt to grab Austina and then use my watch as like a little grappling hook and pull us up like Spider-Man. Austina's prepared for this and has a parachute um, in her bra. So she just pulls the tab and her bra explodes. Okay, and- both of you are going to roll a check then. All right. So uh, first, uh, okay. Austina, tell me what you get. Ah, oh, ten. Ten. <laughs> The uh, bra parachute explodes out, and then you realize there's there's holes in it. Oh, no. Oh, God. Pierce, it's up to you to save Austina. Well, I rolled a five, so. <laughs> and you don't. <laughs> oh, no. Austina plummets <laughs> 70 feet down to the cliff. Uh, oh, no. With, uh, we shouldn't Pierce. have done donuts. 
Pierce Brosnan absolutely uh, misses her hand, and you see her impact on the sand below. Pierce, make one more check. But right before, oh god! Right before she impacts, she goes, "Do I make you horny, baby?" And then she dies. And then <laughs> yeah, as right. I try to, oh no, she doesn't die. She dies. Oh yeah, she dead. She's oh. seventy feet off the cliff. <laughs> what? How am I alive? Am I still falling? Uh, you're going to roll one more you're check to try to uh, grapple check yourself to the uh, wall with your watch. Okay. Uh, in a way, before he does this, in, in a way of saying like, no, Austina, he says, don't make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, oh, <laughs> and I rolled a three. And then you oh, follow her no. as well, right to your d- <laughs> Ah! Oh. Uh, right, right before he dies, Pierce Brosnan makes a confession to no one that he's actually the son of Mick Jagger, and that's why he sounds like that. <gasps> oh, oh my god! I oh, was Mick Jagger's son. I uh, was uh, a rich. I sounded in this way, manner <laughs> when I'm being a secret agent. Yeah. <laughs> he passes out and dies. Yeah. Both Pierce Brosnan and Austina Powers lie next to each other in the sand, their hands accidentally touching. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, in the Oceanside <laughs> Mansion, a man walks out of the door and just says, Well, somebody doing donuts outside of my mansion. I am Ernest von Kilgreef. And then closes the door. And that is oh. the end of the heist. Uh, <laughs> so, so, George, um, if there were like step one, step two, step three yeah. to this camp, to this little campaign, yes. how far did we make it? Uh, step point two. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had like 10 traps set up in that mansion. But this is how it goes oh. sometimes with Chaos D&D Travel Edition, you know? Mm. You, sometimes you don't make it to the assumed uh, objective, which is actually usually how you it goes what? in my experience. Yeah. Just uh, for me, can we run fun. through the events that just transpired? Of course, please. <laughs> Give us a recap. We, ha- we had a conversation on the beach. Uh-huh. We were like, all right, we're going to split up. One's going to climb, one's going to drive. She drove, I climbed mm-hmm. successfully. I knocked out a guy with a tranquilizer mm-hmm. dart. We had the entire roundabout open, no one guarding it. And we decided to do donuts. <laughs> then we fucked up and fell to our deaths. Yep. That sounds about right to me. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, little anticlimactic, uh, but in, in, in a way, more what I wanted than what we were going to do. So <laughs> beautiful. You know, the best stories yeah. don't really have a like a succinct ending you know they just a little a little complicated life doesn't have a beginning middle and end man except that it very much does so sometimes pierce brosnan just just uh (laughs) man can't he he just can't uh can't grapple man that was D &D (sighs) travel edition everybody uh give it a shot when you're bored uh, and there's no <laughs> rules and it's just the goal is to make each other laugh. So just do whatever the hell you want. Uh, really quick before we, um, get to a question, there's one more thing I wanted to ask both of you, uh, Jack and Natasha, that is super relevant to paid back in spades, which is going on right now. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys a little bit about, uh, Chuck and Millie, um, and what that relationship's like and what that's been like in improv at the table for you guys. Uh, Jack, do you want to go first and then we'll go to Tasha, get your take on it? You guys can just have a little. Sure. I mean, we, I, it's just been yeah. awesome. We, we had this idea of like having Charlie, you know, now that Charlie has this like glasses of disguise thing, he can go outside now. And uh, we had this idea of him like falling for somebody and not knowing exactly how to handle that. And then uh, Natasha just came in and made the character all her own and just knocked it out of the park. Yeah. How, what's the, what's Millie like for you, Natasha? Do you like playing Millie? Yeah. I, I love Millie. I think she's sweet. She's smart. Um, I like, it, it was funny because the first day I, I came in, that was also the first day I met you, Jack. Oh my God. Yeah. What? And yeah, that was the first day, and then, like, I'm playing Millie, who's, like, um, you know, like, the love interest, and it's so funny. We're both so naturally, like, awkward and, yeah. like, weird, and I think that comes out so perfectly in um, it, Millie and Charlie. Yeah, because they're both very, like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to say sheltered. What's the word for it? They're just not, like, they spend, they, you know, oh, bury their heads in books. 
<laughs> yeah, they bury their heads in yeah. books all day. So it was just it's yeah. a it was a fun, uh, sweet you know character relationship that came from that. So yeah, I think yeah. I think yeah, I think us meeting for the first time definitely added to the just like general awkwardness of being like. Uh, yeah can i say this yeah <laughs> exactly and, yeah it was perfect it's so fun um so great and you yeah, just absolutely just... crushed it it was perfect thank you i, I, uh, yeah. I know you both of you kind of don't know what the plans are for million check but i just oh no we do not know that i know the plans for million check and you guys are gonna love it <laughs> or we're uh at this point uh for audience members we haven't recorded anything past a certain amount of episodes so there's still a little bit in the dark for Jack and Natasha right now in terms of well, yeah. how Jack and Spades is going to end. Have you uh, talked about that on the show yet, George? How we like basically for Payback and Spades, we recorded all these episodes and we had like a bank and then COVID hit. And now yeah. we just, you know, it's it's we're, uh, we're, currently, we're currently workshopping uh, record from home solutions. And we think we have a good one, but it might take a little while to get the logistics out. But we've got a few weeks before we hit emergency period and. Um, Nick's dealing with, uh, uh, like I said earlier, a little family emergency, so we're giving him a couple of weeks for that, and then we're going to really hit the ground hard on trying to figure out what the exact uh, solution is for getting all these uh, awesome people together on a uh, on a little um, episode. That was the word I was looking yeah, for. Man. Episode. Yeah, episode. But we'll get there. Um, and now, guys, thank you. So, Natasha, thank you for joining us. We have just a couple of things left. We're going to uh, answer a question. So here is a good question for us uh, that comes from uh, one of our listeners. What was it like having such a huge journey off screen or off podcast in Here There Be Monsters, Natasha? And did you write any backstory of what happened in between your appearances? So for those of you who haven't listened oh. to Here There Be Monsters, Natasha is in episode two and three and then is in episode 11. But we haven't seen her in like seven episodes. Mm. Uh, and I know roughly what has happened. We leave uh, her in like the red mountains about to learn how to harness her magical ability. And then in episode 11, she comes back with a teleportation spell and helps the party in their final battle. Uh, did, did you give any thought to what might've happened to Beatrix at that like wizard school in the mountains at all? Yeah. Talk to us. That's so sweet. I love that question. Um, <clears throat> what did I think? I mean, I guess I like when I was playing Beatrix, in my head, I like the thought of her being, you know, this little um, spunky bunny and like a litter of hundreds of other siblings. Mm -hmm. And so kind of that idea of like, how are you this, how does one, you know, step into being an individual and step into like what they like and what makes them feel alive when they kind of they have this pressure to be like everyone else that's maybe in their family or they're enmeshed in like other people's interests or what other people want them to be and so yeah I thought of Beatrix of going off to this wizard school kind of honing her powers you know each and every day stepping more into her own power of being this powerful little bunny character and yeah I hope that came out in the in the last episode of Oh, her just totally did kind of this coming of age you know yeah she's this she's a little magic bunny magic bunny grown up rabbit now yeah i yeah if you ever came Aww. back and played beatrix in a in because we're, we're not we all kind of want to go back to the here there be monsters universe we're not really yeah, sure but... when we want to go back or not not when in terms of like when we want to go we also don't know that but uh, we don't know like what time period we want to go back to in that universe. We're not sure if we want to do after the events or before the events or during the events, but somewhere different. Um, but if we ever got you to play Beatrix again, I would love to draw up like a full wizard character for you. That would be like give you a ton of spells yes. to learn. And we'll try to like, you know, we can give you telekinetic focused powers because that seemed to be kind of how you were working. You know, you're throwing coconuts yeah. in that last battle. So cool yeah oh awesome uh, yeah that would be super fun i would i would love to just draw beatrix up anyway that'd be so cool yeah, just hearing you talk about it i really want to see another season in, in that world oh I, like... I nick has a character it was, fun. It was really fun <sighs> nick nick does not want to play drake muldoon again which i think is the right call because drake had his full arc his full story all happened uh, but yes, his yes. next character True. is the craziest thing i've ever heard uh oh, i won't cool. ruin it 
because I know that he'll want to be the one to reveal it. And maybe he wants to reveal it if we ever do the season, but it is totally, it is the craziest thing I've ever heard. It feels very much, I'll give you a, everybody a hint. It feels like, uh, a little dose of the mermaid, uh, the little mermaid chef who tries to kill Sebastian a hundred times. Oh, but yes. different oh. accent, different personality, but similar cleaver throwing nightmare. It's going to be awesome. Also, we just want to really quick before we wrap up here, uh, we got a little bit of art drawn for us uh, by yeah. at Megan Rink. Megan, thank you so much. Uh, if you guys were going to post it soon on our Instagram, but we ba- she basically uh, did this awesome little uh art um panel of jack and nick playing their D D travel edition one-off uh and it's so fun we love it thank you so please if, if anybody wants to send us stuff we'll post it right away if you guys have any uh, artistic talents that you'd like to share with us seriously we, we've gotten a few for the current season of uh paid back in spades but uh i was not expecting to see any members only fan art from like, a, <laughs> like right. and that that like made my day so thank you oh, megan absolutely. Yeah, thank you guys. If if anyone wants to do an Austina Powers boob parachute, I'd be extremely honored. A, a, a parachute for Austina Powers? Yeah. That's the work? Yes. And, you know, Pierce Brosnan could always use more people drawing him. So, you know, in this context, sure. <laughs> Pierce needs some artists that care about his rendering. Come on. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, come on. Man's a legend. It, he's a legend. Pierce Brosnan, we love you. Come be on Hero Club. Uh, please, guys, please, 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 please. <laughs> you know you listen. Come be on Hero Club. We know you're listening, Pierce. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for listening to Members Only. Natasha, thank you for being with Jack and I today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was super fun. Listen to uh, Members Only, uh, but also listen to uh, Hero Club and all of our backlog of seasons. We're all under stay-at-home orders. Uh, you know, you got a little bit of time and we'd like to uh, keep you company during that time. Uh, and also, please follow us at uh, Hero Club Podcast on Instagram. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, our website is www.heroclubpodcast.com. And then feel free, guys. We would really deeply appreciate it if you're listening and you really like Hero Club. Uh, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or any of your preferred platforms. Uh, recommend us to your friends. Uh, this is the perfect time for word of mouth to really uh, spread the word. Uh, because Especially if you know Pierce Brosnan. Especially. And you want to get him on the show. Just just uh, tell him. That's We're here. goal numero uno. Uh, love you, Pierce. Very goal is yeah, Pierce. We love you, uh, everybody. Thank you for listening and uh, tune in to Paid Back in Spades episode six, which I think we're calling our mid-season finale, which is coming out next Tuesday. And uh, keep listening and thank you so much for uh, having listened to everything so far. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to Hero Club members only. Glad to have you. This is where we talk about all the things that we don't get to say on the show Cause that's not our thing Welcome to Hero Club Members Only